Hey folks, Dr. Lava here. Well, last week we talked about the best cut content from Super Mario 64, and I know I promised a video about Mario 128 this week, but actually I'm going to have to delay that episode a while until I can get some more of the necessary resources. I did get a few requests for Pokemon Red and Blue though, and since so many of the Pokemon games are positively jam-packed with scrapped ideas and cut content, we're going to spend the next few weeks cataloging all the missing material from the Pokemon series. In the case of Red and Blue's six-year development, it wasn't a time crunch that was the problem, like with most of the games that we've covered, but a lack of storage space on the Game Boy cartridge. According to programmer and monster designer Shigeki Morimoto, who you might remember from his cameos in some of the later games, when Red and Blue were completed and the debug features removed, only 300 bytes of free space were left over. Of course, Morimoto, who's got a reputation for being a mischievous type, used those last few bytes to program Mew into the game, a prank that risked corrupting the game with glitches since the debug features were no longer present, and might have cost him his job if the buzz surrounding the mysterious number 151 hadn't inadvertently caused the game to rocket to the top of the Japanese sales charts. But that's another story. The point is, dozens of Pokemon and lots more content had to be cut to meet the size requirements. But developer interviews, concept art, and little bits of leftover code can tell us some of what we missed out on. So let's take a look at the people, places, and Pokemon that had to be cut out of Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue. In a May 2018 interview conducted by Japanese newspaper Yomiuri, Pokemon's creator Satoshi Tajiri said more than 200 Pokemon were designed for Red and Blue. Then, because of a lack of storage space, were whittled down to 150. Some of them were held back and implemented later in the series, mostly Generation 2, while others were revised into Pokemon we know today, like how Deer, Elmu Elmu, and Dragon 4 became Stantler, Spiro, and Charizard. But rather than comb through all the rough drafts of the original 150, we're just going to focus on the Pokemon that were cut out of the series entirely. Our first glimpse at one of these lost Pokemon comes from the original concept art that Tajiri pitched to Nintendo when he was seeking out funding back in 1990. Gaun, along with Rhydon, appears to be one of the first two Pokemon ever designed, and its name is the Japanese word for the sound of Godzilla's roar. These next three come from a 2018 manga published in Japan, called Satoshi Tajiri, the man who created Pokemon, which included more 90s concept art, revealing Crocky, who looks like a bug-eyed baby crocodile, Jagu, who seems to be a mix between a shark and a swordfish, and Barunda, who probably didn't make it in the top 150 because he's little more than a smiley face. Analyzed footage of a 2004 episode of Japanese TV show Game Center CX featuring Tajiri revealed two more lost Pokemon. Kotora, an electric tiger that's maybe mixed with a hamster, and its evolved form Rytora. Kotora and Rytora were also in the leaked Gold and Silver beta demo Pokédex, which we'll be talking about more in depth in our Gold and Silver episode next week. Despite being included, then cut from both Generations 1 and 2, these Electric Tigers still haven't found their way into an official release. Yomiuri conducted another interview in 2018, this time with three Red and Blue developers, who dropped the bombshell that the Pikachu Raichu line was meant to have a third form called Gorochu, but because they were running out of cartridge space, Gorochu was scrapped. They explained that it wasn't just Gorochu, there were other three-stage evolutionary lines that were cut down to just two as well. That would explain why that gold and silver beta demo had so many unreleased baby Pokemon. But if we're going to pick just one that was most likely cut from red and blue, it's got to be Mekon. Vulpix's Gen 1 Pokédex entry actually makes reference to Mekon, telling us that at the time of its birth it has just one tail. The tail splits from its tip as it grows older. Partial sprites for elephant and cactus Pokemon can also be found in the concept art. Fan reconstructions tell us they may have looked something like this, but as the original sprites are obscured, it's impossible to say exactly what they may have looked like. There are a few more monsters in the early concept art that are sometimes cited elsewhere as scrapped Pokemon that also belong on this list. But if you study the concept art throughout Pokemon's six-year development, it's pretty clear they were just storyboarding tools to help explain the battling and breeding concepts and were never meant to actually become in-game Pokemon. Hiding inside the game's internal data, we have leftover code for 39 trainers who didn't make it into the final build, but with glitches or a game shark, you can battle them. The most interesting of the 39 is Professor Oak himself, the game's most powerful trainer who was probably meant to be the final boss. At the start of the game, you and your rival take two of his three Pokeballs containing Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander. Well, as it turns out, Professor Oak made good use of the one that was left over and beefed it all the way up to level 69. 
Professor Oak's team also consists of Gyarados, Tauros, Executor, and Arcanine. Another key trainer is the Sylph Chief, who it appears at some point in development was meant to be the final boss of the 11-story Sylphco building in Saffron. There are 37 other missing trainers in the game's code, a bunch of nobodies really, like these three for example. Luckily for this engineer though, he did manage to make his way into the Generation 3 remakes Fire Red and Leaf Green. Now going by the name Bailey, he's one of Lieutenant Surge's flunkies in the Vermilion City Gym. Red and Blue are home to 11 towns and cities, but originally were meant to have a 12th. A place technically called Zero B, but more commonly known as the Lost City. The original 1990 concept art includes this early map of Kanto, which is nearly identical to the map from the release version, but with a most significant difference being the existence of an extra city just south of Celadon. What's more, in the game's internal code, there's formatted data for an extra unused map with index number 0B at the end of the list of towns and just before the list of routes. Once you've entered 0B, the game's internal code sends up a flag that checks it off a list of places that you can fly to. This flag is only used elsewhere when you visit an actual city, like Lavender or Fuchsia for example. Like the other cities, but unlike the routes, no wild Pokemon are defined for 0B. There's also code for a shop in the unused data that may have been located in 0B and even what's for sale at the shop. While unconfirmed by the developers, the Lost City certainly exists, or did at one time anyway. But unfortunately, no matter what method you use to get there, your game will freeze and you'll never actually get a chance to explore the legendary Lost City of 0B. Okay, there was some more cut content and beta elements that didn't make it in the final build like this concept art that shows a more varied Kanto landscape that was home to lakes, rivers, and a desert, and internal data that reveals an HM was removed from the game, though we have no idea what that HM actually was. But like always, this is a best of list, so those scrapped ideas are going to have to just settle for honorable mention. Okay, next week we're going to cover gold and silver, so subscribe if you don't want to miss that, and check out our past videos for more Nintendo Cut content. If there are any corrections that need to be made, I'll put them in this video's description, along with all my sources, including the fan art shown earlier. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time.